Mike is with us now. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Would you describe yourself as a conspiracy theorist? Well, um, I look at what officialdom tells us is happening and check it out. And if you can back that up with information, it's not a theory. And there are situations where you think, I think this could be this, or it could be that, that, that could be happening, that's a theory. But much of it is backed up by hard factual information. And interestingly, when you look at the dictionary definition of the very word conspiracy, uh, we're drowning in them. What, what, one is the action of plotting or conspiring. I mean, that's happening all the time. Give me multiple... an example of a conspiracy at the moment. Well, um, ironically, we've had George Osborne this week um, trying to ridicule conspiracies involving oh. the EU by likening them to believing in the Loch Ness Monster. And in the same week, we've had the Daily Mail exposing the Prime Minister for conspiring, in effect, with big business to frighten the public into staying in the EU while publicly to Parliament as well, saying that um, he would come out if the negotiations, renegotiations didn't work. That's a conspiracy. Is that a conspiracy or is it just politicians uh, doing the time-honoured thing of being less than honest with us? Well, if you're telling the public that you will uh, have the option of coming out if you do not renegotiate with the EU the way you want, mm. and you then you don't do that. And at the same time you're telling the public and parliament that, you are um, working with big business behind the scenes already to frighten the public into staying in, even though your renegotiation's not, not finished. That is a conspiracy to mislead the public. What other conspiracies should we worry about? Well, what um, we're looking at uh, all the time are conspiracy after conspiracy coming to light, while the idea of conspiracy and the, the very word conspiracy is demonised. For instance, we have a situation with this Chilcot inquiry where um, we're going to see, indeed the information has already come out, that the Prime Minister uh, of the time, Tony Blair and George Bush and, 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 and the administrations, lied to us to justify an invasion um, of Iraq. And that is a, a conspiracy that has cost the lives of staggering numbers of people and created uh, an ongoing catastrophe that's still going on. And let's not forget this. The very same people, not just the same agencies, the same people that uh, told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq when they knew they weren't, those very same people gave us the official story of 9-11. And what the mainstream media so was, is was doing... was 9-11 a conspiracy? Of course it was. Who when, was when, behind it? Well, what was behind it was... No, who was behind it? Well, again, in the time we've got here, it's very difficult. But there is a network that works through... Um, government agencies, through organisations like the CIA, etc., to push an agenda on the world which is unfolding by the day. My books in the 1990s laid out what this agenda was, and those books are now being read on the television news in changes in, in, in society and laws coming in. OK. And, and, and the thing is, this is the point, the mainstream media has accepted that those characters, those same characters, lied about Iraq, but will not question in any way the same people's version of 9-11. They're journalists, it's their job. But do you still think the royal family were shape-shifting lizards? Yes, I do. You do? Yes. And you also want us to believe 9-11 is a conspiracy? Uh, yes, but the Doesn't point... Doesn't that, that rather undermine... I mean, well, no, it I doesn't. can see the point that you might have some uh, question 9-11, but if you also think... That Buckingham Palace is inhabited by lizards. It kind uh, of undermines but it's not it. that. It's not that simple. There's a whole big backstory before you you get to to um, uh, what what I'm saying. If you if you deliver it in one line, oh, you know the world's run by reptiles. It, it, you, you meet it on one level. Oh, that's crazy. Immediate reflex action. But when you well, see the crazy. when you see the backstory and the evidence to support this, ancient and modern, it, you you see that. Uh, one line, yeah. throwaway line, um, in a completely different context. All right, let me bring in that, that. Have you ever believed in a conspiracy theory, Liz? No, I haven't, but um, 
I think David Aronovich is really interesting on this because he, he says that sort of paradoxically we kind of, we keep obsessing about conspiracies because somehow it's, it's actually reassuring to think that there's some great some network or, or some <laughs> purpose when in fact the world is chaotic and random and terrible things happen. And we Iraq was just a hor horrible foreign policy head, mistake. And we can't get our heads around it. You see, as a journalist, I would love to believe in conspiracy theorists because they're much better stories. But almost everything I've ever investigated, it turns out cock up is a better explanation than conspiracy. Yes, I know people put a lot of work into conspiracy theories, but I, I still think they're actually intellectually lazy. Um, I, I think, you know, people just don't want to get their head around the way things really work. That having been said, I mean, let me say firstly that, you know, a lot of people are gullible about conspiracies. I mean, I think the police were extremely gullible about the Downing Street paedophile ring, as it turns out. And on the other hand, let's maybe, I'll just end my comment with this point. There clearly was a conspiracy over Hillsborough. And over 28 years or whatever it was, people denied there was a conspiracy, but there was. My last book before the present one is 1,000 pages. Have you read any of my books? No, I haven't. How do you know that it's intellectually lazy? I wasn't talking about you, actually, No, David. no, no, I, no I, I, I think, you I were that... talking about me, because that, that's what I do. How do you know... No, that, I meant that... mem members of the public who immediately latch on to a conspiracy as being the most reasonable explanation of a perfectly simple situation, I think are intellectually lazy. How that do we know point. you're not a conspiracy to make us all believe in conspiracies? People must believe what they like. See, this is the simple thing. It's ever so simple. You look at information and you make a decision on what you think of it. Mm. But if no one is investigating what um, governments and authorities are saying with a view to whether it's true or not, then what uh, chance have people got to, to see information um, that they can then make a decision on. All they're getting is the mainstream uh, repeat, repeat, repeat version of everything. Right. Well, I mean, in my uh, career, everything I know has been investigated, and we go by the facts. Yeah. Just very yeah. briefly, what are you up to these days? i um, uh, just got a new book out called Phantom Self, and I'm going on a world tour. Um, well, all over the world, and uh, that's, that, that, that's, no, well, that shows out of time. how many people are looking at this. As in before you go on that world too. That's your love tonight, folks, but not for us.